whenever we hear about pollution, this is different kinds of pollution. It includes air pollution. And, and whenever we talk about air pollution, people immediately say, oh, we need to get rid of fossil fuels. It's fossil fuels that are killing everyone. If we had everything run on solar and wind and wave, everything would be fine. That's not quite what this report says, though, is it? Well, that's right. There's a really unhealthy conflation between the climate agenda and that relentless desire to reduce emissions in every single uh, sector of our lives and actually tackling air pollution in, in an effective way. Mm. What we see is that a lot of air pollution deaths are indoor air pollution. These yeah. are really poor people, the poorest people in the world, uh, using wood and, and uh, other bio mass fuels in their homes they're breathing in the smoke uh, right where they live yeah. what they need to have is central heating electrification yeah. and fridges, a lot of, a fridges lot of, would be nice too that's right and a lot of that does involve fossil fuels um so and basically it is the it is the absence of fossil fuels in these countries this isn't people who are dying you know living living near a road that's you know near a, near a gas power station or, or pollution from cars these are people dying in their mi millions in very poor countries where they don't have access to reliable energy from fossil fuels. So they're, as you say, little, they're living in a little hut and burning burning on a wood fire, children sitting around breathing in. in, in it's, often it is children and the vulnerable, the elderly, who are dying like this. Um, and so it's, it's the absence of fossil fuels that's a problem, not the fossil fuels themselves. In very many cases, yes. I mean, we have to be clear, there are power stations, which yep. are dirty coal power stations, far too close to population centres. Those are problems as well. Um, and what Western governments can do is actually provide the investments to make those cleaner power stations. They may still be coal, but they should have those scrubbers on. We should put them away from where people are living. And, and, and the fact is Western governments are just abandoning this development space because they don't want to touch fossil fuels. Yeah. They want to be holier than thou, so pure. And actually, they're allowing the Chinese to come in to facilitate more corruption, more pollution. Um, and actually, we need to recognise that actually development isn't always pretty. We industrialised and it yes. was dirty at times. But actually, there are productive things that we can be no, doing. No, but also, we industrialised and the result of the industrialisation is that mm. we live almost three times longer than on average we mm. used to live as a result of that. People used to die routinely. You know, average uh, longevity was uh, 35. I mean, that includes, an awful, obviously, an average, an awful lot of children dying in, in the first year of their life. But people didn't live to the sort of ages routine that we live now, 78, 9, 80, you know, 90. Um, and that's because of industrialization. Mm. That's because of the, the machines and the, the medical and scientific innovations we've had as a result of the use of fossil fuels and, and those machines. And yet we're saying, well, you shouldn't have those in the third world, in the developing mm. world, because that would be terrible. And there are a lot on the you know, on this climate agenda who genuinely think that we should not be helping these countries to develop, even though it is that development which actually saves lives. We're constantly losing sight of the benefits of industrialisation. And those benefits are enormous, uh, and they're why we live in the sort of um, prosperous world that we live in. We still yeah. have problems as well, but we're so much better off than we were in the past. And <clears throat> we need to raise the whole world up to our kind of living standards. Yeah. Um, so it's really frustrating to see all those benefits routinely ignored and only the downsides focused on. But this is it. I mean, this study is a Lancet study. It's saying that um, it's a Lancet Commission on Pollution and Health. They blamed pollution for these nine million deaths, about one in six deaths globally. This is, and they say, you know, bad air has killed, I mean, this is extraordinary, um, uh, 2.3 million premature deaths in India. But it's interesting, often again, we're talking about premature deaths. These aren't people just suddenly being wiped out in a, you know, a gas power station explosion or anything we're talking about people living perhaps short lives because of the dirtiness but this is where us basically say we're going to be cleaner we want to have you know no more you know gas powered stations and and uh, or anything in this country we instead are going to have unreliable highly expensive energy here so we're going to export of all of our our, mm. our industrial capacity overseas and we'll say yes we'll buy everything from china but don't worry look how lovely and clean and green mm. we are but we're actually meaning that the net effect is that we are having goods that are produced in dirtier factories in, in, in greater pollution and then they're being shipped on oil tankers around the world to get to us huge extra costs uh, into the environment from that um i mean so it's, it's hypocritical anyway isn't it well many of the <clears throat> rare earth metals that are being used in batteries mm. um, and wind turbines for example 
uh, are being mined in the most atrocious conditions um, in places like China yep. um, and uh, where people are being routinely exposed to all of these industrial uh, processes yep. in, in unsavory environments. We see human rights abuses in the Congo, child labourers, uh, child laborers working in these cobalt mines which is such an important uh, sort of uh, mineral that's being used in the electrification yeah. process. Well we can, that stuff we can turn our, our, our blind eye to. Let me bring in Tom Slater from Spike to Online on this because it is fascinating how much you know, we, cost of living crisis, massive mm. crisis at the moment. There's no doubt it's a massive factor from Ukraine uh, when you have an embargo on Russian oil and gas and that caused the spike in the prices and we've got issues with uh, of course with you know with wheat production and sunflower oil and things in, in Ukraine as well but there's no doubt that a lot of the problems we've got in terms of high energy prices and the issues we've got now is, is a failure to do long-term investment mm -hmm. in energy other than renewables which are unreliable and still pretty unaffordable as well um, and, and yet there seems to be a, 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 you know so many of the problems we've got right now are actually related to a failure of our energy policy mm -hmm. and then we put out studies like that and then everyone goes oh yes well that just shows we should definitely move to renewables we're just going to create an, an even worse situation we're going to exacerbate the situation we're in right now more deaths overseas and, and, and we're going to still have higher energy prices here. No, it's just nothing can shake the dogma at this point. No, I mean, you know, the, the fact that, I mean, you know, from net zero watch here, but, you know, the fact that net zero still hasn't, you know, bit the dust despite the fact we're in the middle of this cost of living crisis. I mean, you guys have been talking a lot about how environmental is environmentalism is essentially a rich country's indulgence. It's also a rich person's indulgence. You yeah. see at times like this, especially with uh, fuel costs, which are always a much bigger proportion of people's budgets, you have these policies that have been set in train for a very long time, which will make life more expensive and more difficult. And but harder and less pleasant and less enjoyable exactly. for ordinary people. Again, I it's like, we'll put a jumper and turn the heating down. Yeah, I've already got socks. a jumper on, I don't want to turn the heating <laughs> down. I work hard for my heat. But this oh, should be affordable for people. Mm. But, but, but Harry, this thing, the, the net zero thing is still a target. Mm. It's, I, I think it's one of the biggest issues in this in this government. Um, again, very, I've said this a million times, sorry, but maybe you could just sing along with me. You know, voted for by a majority of MPs in this country after 90 minutes of debate, I mean inverted commas, of po people you know, pontificating in absolute nonsense, un un unfact-based nonsense. Um, but we've still got this policy. This policy is going to be the economic ruination of this country and no one ever lived longer and had a healthier life in a poorer country. Now, there's been no strategic thinking in terms of energy. Uh, we need actually a plan that's not based on sort of ideological commitments, that's based on actually meeting our energy needs. Uh, oh, don't, don't, that's and, insane. Uh, what, what a crazy <laughs> idea for an energy policy, Harry. Uh, I mean, nuclear could solve a lot of these uh, fracking? air pollution issues as well as mm. meeting uh, our energy needs. Where fracking could be a part of that as well. Um, and, and you were mentioning earlier these numbers. Um, we do have to take them with a slightly a slight pinch of salt, these air pollution numbers. Yeah. They are just sort of putting together what they call quality adjusted life years lost. So they're compounding. Yeah. Each of us represent just a bit of that and then they're compounding it all together. And they've done that with air pollution. I know in London mm. some of the figures that the London yeah. Mayor Sadiq Khan spouts. And again, you're actually talking about people living for two weeks less. Yeah, but having but the great pleasure of getting to use cars and planes and trains. I'll take two weeks less in a care home in my 90s in return for being able to get planes everywhere. Can I ask you just finally, I want to get squeezed in, where, where are you in terms of a, uh, a windfall tax, one-off windfall tax on energy mm. firms, particularly energy firms uh, who've had great profits as a result of the oil price rise? Well, I think with, right. with, with the windfall tax, what we see is actually it's a very volatile industry, oil and gas. They've taken big losses in other years. They're already uh, taxed more than other industries. They're um, taxed a lot more, and, they? and if we want to actually get the price of energy down, taxing it more is, is not going to be a way to do that particularly effectively. What I want to see is actually the, energy, the environmental levies taken off of uh, people's they're, bills. They're more than the profit that the companies take, aren't they? Or they, they'll be paying on those green taxes. Really good to talk to you. Great to get you in the studio as well. Harry Wilkinson, Head of Policy at Net Zero Watch.